Hello, and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host, Geekman, and today I'm going to teach you how to simulate the look of charcoal pencil sketched text in Photoshop. That means taking a font, outlining it in such a way that it looks as if it were hand drawn using a charcoal pencil. So, a couple of assumptions that I'm making right off the bat, the first one being that you are using Photoshop CC 2015 or later. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. If you're using a Mac, then when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key on your keyboard. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key on a Mac keyboard. So without further ado, let's get started by creating a brand new document. Let's hit control N on our keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. And let's name this um, charcoal pencil text. Uh, and the size of this document is going to be 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels by 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit. Background contents are going to be white, so click on the little square and make it all white, which is FFFFFF. Then hit uh, Adobe RGB 1998 square pixels, hit OK, and we're ready to begin. Now the first thing that we need to do with this document is change our foreground and background color to the colors that we'll be using throughout this tutorial. Now the foreground color that we're using is a pencil gray, which I'm using as 454545. The background is going to be pure white, so that's all Fs, or you can just drag up to the upper left hand corner, hit OK. And we are ready to begin there. Now we need to choose our font. So let's go to the text tool by hitting T on our keyboard or by clicking on the text tool on your toolbar to the left. The font that I'm using is called Day Poster Black and I will leave a link to it in the description below. I'm using it at 175 points, sharp, center aligned, and the color that I'm using is gray, which is our 454545 pencil gray. So let's click and write in our text, pixel magic as always. And uh, I will then move this to the center of the screen. You don't have to do this. I am because it's easier for you to see, uh, going back to my text tool. So something to note about all of the free fonts that you get online and most of the fonts that you get with your computer is that the kerning or the spacing between letters is usually pretty bad. What, I, what do I mean by this? Well, the X here, as you can see in pixel magic, the X is very close to the E, but very far apart from the I. And that is called the kerning around the letter X. Now we want to fix that. And the way that you do that is you click and put your cursor between the letters you wish to fix. Then holding down the Alt key on your keyboard, you can then use the left and right arrows to move things closer or further apart. So holding down the Alt key and using the left arrow will move things closer and the right arrow will move them further apart. So I am now going to uh, adjust the kerning for all of these letters slightly just to make it look a little bit better. So moving it closer there, moving it closer here. Uh, let's move that a little further. And then the C needs to be moved very far in. Everything looks good now. Hit the check mark when you're done and you now have your text ready to go. So what we want to do with this text is outline it and get rid of the fill. So let's change our fill opacity down to zero. Uh, not the opacity of the layer, but the layer, uh, but the fill opacity needs to be zero. Then we're going to give this layer a stroke, and the stroke that we're using is going to be a size of seven. Position is center. Blend mode is dissolve. Opacity is 75. Overprint is unchecked. Fill type is color, and the color that we're using is once again our foreground color, or 454545. Hit OK, and we have the beginnings of our charcoal pencil text. Now the first thing that we want to do with this now that we have it is duplicate it. So hit control J on the keyboard and then let's rename this as lines one. Once we have renamed it, let's right click on it and let's convert it to a smart object. And the reason that we're converting this to a smart object is that the underlying text is still editable, but we can then apply filters to the layer without having to rasterize it. So that's why we're making this into a smart object. 
So once we have our lines one as a smart object, we then need to duplicate that smart object two times. So hit Control J once, then Control J twice to make two copies. And let's rename these as lines two and lines three. Once we have lines one, two, and three, we are ready to add some filters to these three layers. Now we're gonna go up here to on lines number one, let's make sure that we select that. We're gonna go up here to filter, we're gonna go to distort, we're gonna go to zigzag. Once we are on zigzag, the amount that we're gonna do is 30. The ridges that we're gonna use are eight, and the style is out from center. We're then gonna hit okay, and our text looks a little bit mess messed up as if you were hand drawing it and made some mistakes. That's why we're doing this. So then we are going to do to lines one, we're gonna change its layer mode to dissolve and its opacity to 90%. Once we have done that, it begins to look more like charcoal pencil made those mistakes. We're gonna do the same basic thing with lines two and lines three. So lines two, we are going to go to filter, distort, and zigzag, and we are going to change it to 10 for amount. We're gonna change the ridges to five and the style to pond ripples. We're gonna hit okay, and that looks like more of a mistake. And we're going to change its layer mode to dissolve and its opacity to only 50% because it's a very light mistake. And then we're gonna do the same basic thing with lines three once again. So uh, filter, distort, zigzag, we're only going to make it a five amount, ridges are five and style is still pond ripples, so hit OK, and we now have that. Uh, then we want to change it to dissolve, its layer mode needs to be dissolve, and its opacity is going to be 65%. We now have lines one, two, and three looking like they were hand drawn with a charcoal pencil, but everything lines up a little bit too much for there to have been simulated mistakes in our drawing. So we want to go back to lines one and we want to select our uh, move tool up here on the tools uh, palette or by hitting V on the keyboard. And once we have done that, we are going to move each layer slightly out of alignment. Uh, so lines number one, make sure that it's selected and you've got your move tool. We're going to use the right and down arrow key. So we're going to go right three times and we're going to go down three times to make it a little bit uh, off from everything else. Then we're going to go to lines two and we're going to do it the opposite way. So left three and then up three. And then lines three, we're going to move to the right twice and then down once. And we now have what looks like a pretty bad mistake every here and again, but still lining up properly to look as if you hand drew this and finally got it right on your last try. So that all looks very nice and very good. However, what's missing is hatching or cross-hatching within the lettering, which is usually found uh, in when artists make uh, their, their outlined pencil sketch uh, text. They usually put some hashing or hatch marking, uh, cross-hatching inside of the letters to help it stand out from the background. So we're gonna do that also. And the way that we're gonna do that is by selecting now the background layer and creating a brand new layer. Rename it to hatching, H-A-T-C-H-I-N-G. That is hatching, like you're hatching a chicken, but hatching or hatch marks. Uh, so we are going to then uh, simulate hatch marketing. The way that we do that is we go up here to filter and we go to render and we go to fibers. Once we're in fibers, the variance that we're using is 27 and the strength that we're using is 64. And then you can hit randomize a few times to, until you see hatching that you like. Then we're gonna hit okay, and we now have the beginnings of hatching. Now there are two glaring issues with this already that I see. Number one, hatching and cross hatching are usually done at an angle, usually 45 degrees or its opposite, which is between 125 and 135 degrees. So we're gonna have to fix that. The second thing is this is much too dark to be good cross hatching. It looks way too dark. So we're going to have to lighten that up. Now the way that we'll do that is by using the levels dialog box for our layer. So first we're going to use our uh, 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 transform tool in order to 
make this look like it's at a 45 degree angle. So let's hit Control T on our keyboard to bring up the transform tool. And up here in the options, you'll see this little angle icon. And right next to it, just put in 45. And this is now at a 45 degree angle. Now sometimes, the uh, since it's been moved, the hatching won't cover your entire uh, text. Now in my case it does, but let me show you what to do if it doesn't cover the entire text. What you want to do is move your mouse up to the upper right hand uh, center of the uh, layer, and you'll see it turn into a double headed arrow. Then you want to hold down Shift and Alt at the same time, then click, and then you can drag out to stretch the hatching layer so it fills as much as you need it to fill. So in my case, this looks good enough. Once you're done, hit Enter twice on the keyboard to accept that, and you now have your hatching. But again, it is too dark. So we're going to fix that by hitting Control L on the keyboard to bring up Levels. And in the Levels dialog box on the right-hand side underneath your big uh, uh, input levels area is a slider. You want to bring this slider all the way down to about 130 is a good number to begin with, and that will change the look of the hatching. Now your hatch marks uh, preview that you see here is going to be much lighter and brighter than the final product. So once you hit OK, uh, it will darken up. And that's because this is just a preview, a simulation of what the final image will look like. So if this looks good to you and you like this, then you actually want to make this slightly lighter. So I'm going to bring this down to about 120 because I want it to be as light as this or as close to as light as this as I can get. So now it's at 120. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, and you see it darkened up a little bit. So it still looks pretty good to my eye. And this looks like hatching. However, what I want is cross-hatching, and the way that we do that is we're going to duplicate the hatching layer by selecting it and then hitting Control-J to duplicate it. We will then, on that layer, hit Control-T uh, to bring up the Transform uh, tool again. Then we will right-click on the layer itself and then go to Flip Horizontal, and that will flip it the other way. Once that's done, hit Enter twice on your keyboard to select and OK that. Then once you have that, you're going to go to your hatching copy layer and change its layer mode to multiply. And just like that, you have cross hatching that looks random and looks as if it were done with a charcoal pencil. But it's everywhere on the screen, which we don't want. So the best way to get rid of that is we're going to combine these two layers. So make sure you are on the topmost layer, in my case, hatch, hatching copy. And you are going to hit Control E to merge it with hatching. It is now called hatching. And then once that's done, you can then go up here to the T of the text layer, hold down control on your keyboard and click once on the T of your text layer to make a selection of just that text layer. Once that selection is done, go down to the bottom of the layer panel and add a layer mask. And just like that, the cross hatching is now contained only within your lettering. Now the th last thing that you want to do here is you want to change the, um, cr the hatching layer to dissolve, and then you want to change its layer opacity to about 80%. That will lighten it up and it will look more as if it were drawn with a, uh, a charcoal pencil. Once you have done that, then we can grab all of these layers except for our background layer. So select hatching and then hold down shift and click on lines three, right click and then convert it all to a smart object. And that will make it look as if it were all done with a charcoal pencil with mistakes and all. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I create new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.